following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This, this is Mick Shots, streaming live on DallasCowboys.com and the official Dallas Cowboys app. Now, here are Bill Jones, Savannah Hugh Moeller, Everson Walls, and Mickey Spagnola. And it's time for another edition of Mix Shots. As March Madness turns into April Gladness. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> the NFL wow. draft, 24 <laughs> days away. That's right. And we're here to talk about it and much, much more. Bill Jones, Savannah Humoler, who enjoyed some, he, who did some draft <laughs> scouting mm-hmm. at uh, an Elite Eight game yesterday. <laughs> Everson fact, Walls, whose scrambling team was an NCAA tournament team this mm-hmm. year. Very briefly. And Mickey Spagnola, <laughs> whose Missouri Tigers are playing baseball now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. Have a good weekend. Yes, great weekend. I, know I did. Watched I did. a lot of basketball. Mm-hmm. Some football. Yep. The UFL season began on Saturday what, in Arlington. What at game Choctaw did you watch? Stadium. Um, Bob Stoops, Arlington Renegades, actually, the defending champions. Defending champions. I watched the second half of St. Louis, Michigan. You saw the 64-yard I field goal to win the game. Yes, there's another Brandon goal. Aubrey that's headed to the <laughs> oh NFL. Boy. Jake Bates. Sorry, we're in good shape. We're in good shape. <laughs> Jake that's okay. Bates, his mm. first kick since high school. Yeah, he wasn't even the since kicker at high school. He went to Arkansas, wow. but he was the kickoff specialist. Oh no, right? he went to. Central Arkansas. Oh, I I saw that he was from Arkansas. Wait. (laughs) Went to Central Arkansas, then went to Arkansas State as a kickoff specialist. Okay. Never tried any But he wasn't a Razorback. Then he went to Arkansas as a kickoff specialist. Never tried a field goal. Uh, And he's So he kicked, just didn't kick field goals. Yeah. Okay. He was a soccer player, too, Mm -hmm. by the way. And then the first kick he gets is... He lines up at his own 46-yard line. And I'm sitting there going, are you kidding me? And then here's the kicker. No pun intended. No pun intended. (laughs) He hit from 64 right after they called timeout. So he had to do it twice. And he hit both of them? And he hit both of them. That's awesome. And they were suggesting that it would have been good from 70. Did you think that? Yeah, he cleared it. Oh, Right down the middle. It was it was pretty amazing. That's great. I also did some scouting. I believe it was number 69 for Michigan. Uh, center guard, Cole Cabral, 6'5", 340. I saw him wipe out two guys on one play. <laughs> he, he, he got off the line of scrimmage, took care of the linebacker, then went and got the safety. And I said... If that guy's that mean, I need him on my team. Now he's only been on practice squad, so I, he, there's yeah, got to so, be something. So something's wrong. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. Too keep, good to keep an be eye on him, Mickey. But keep an usually, eye on him. Usually, for player, ne- nothing against the UFL, yeah. but usually something's gone wrong. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> but you never Consistently, know. Consistently, Bill. It does not just one time. You, never know, right. you, you never know when Brandon <laughs> Aubrey shows up, right? Exactly. Or Cavante Turner. Turpin. That's right. Exactly right. So, well, yep. I had the amazing experience this weekend. The uh, high school sports magazine McDonald's All American Football Team Banquet. I spoke there. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Well, well, had a good time down where in was South this? Padre Island. Oh, no, my. Padre. I don't know if I look darker or not. You know, now the, I'm still feeling South Padre ish. The McDonald's All America team, I, I think of basketball for the no, McDonald's no, All no. So there's a McDonald's All America football All team, too. Team banquet. Yep, that's mm-hmm. exactly what it was. It was a coaches' convention that they had down there. And some of the kids there were actually McDonald's All Americans. That's awesome. You did a good job. Great. You did a good job. You recruit Nico, anybody to Grambling? Nico Rollins was there. Nico from uh, the, the, the Texans, the wide receiver, number 12. Oh, so okay. Name, Nico. And Nico is a whole forehead taller than I am. Nico Collins. Collins. Thank Collins, you. I said yeah. Rollins. Thank you. Yeah. He's a, an entire forehead taller than I am. So <laughs> taking pictures with him, I'm thinking to myself, what would I do with this guy? <laughs> That's all I could think. What would I do with this guy? That's the new breed of wide receiver in this league. 
speaker, and he left me hanging big time. He didn't speak. I mean, so like, you like he had said, the floor then. Thank you. And, and then you had to right back carry down. the stage. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Thanks, <laughs> dude. Yeah, that's what I said <laughs> during my speech. That's exactly what I said. But we had a good time down there. The kids down there are great. Uh, down in the valley, as they call it. Uh huh. Uh, you know, you've got the Edinburghs, the McAllens, all down there. Far San Juan Alamo. Thank you, Far. Exactly. They had a kid from Far. Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Sure did. <laughs> Uh, and, so. by the way, Savannah and I did some scouting at the Big 12 Pro, Pro Days. Days. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we did. It was a great, great I watched event. the running backs run the 40s. And what did you see? You, you, they had numbers on. So if you didn't have a roster, you had no idea <laughs> who they true. were, right? But you can watch it and kind of predict 4-5, four, 4-6, four, whatever. Um so anybody catch your not really, eye? Not uh, really. Can you give us a number or someone who, that we try to do. Who was the best running back in the Big Twelve this year? Well, well he's, a kid uh, he's from not Oklahoma coming out. State. Okay, he's he's going but back he's, to school. He's a Ollie Gordon. No, no, Gordon. no seniors. He wasn't there. No senior running back. Well, there this was, there Texas, was like seven see, of Texas them. is not considered to be in the Big Twelve for Big Twelve pro days, okay. and so okay. which was the funny running for back a from minute. Texas is. I was going. Could be playing here. So they're having the, they're having the Big Twelve Pro Days, and Texas had their own. I so I was thinking, what's the deal? I go, oh, they're in the SEC. Yeah, mm -hmm. doesn't count. Mm -hmm. So did you see anything uh, that when you peeked in? You know, nothing that really stuck out to me. They only had three quarterbacks there, and then I was watching some of the wide receiver drills and some of the running back drills, but I didn't watch anybody. We gotta have some 40s. good wide receivers that came out, there, right? Uh, there were some guys there making some catches. Yeah. Um, again, nobody that like totally stuck mm -hmm. out to me. Yeah, just like you. And then they worked out again on Saturday. Friday was uh, interview day, I guess. They conducted interviews. So, so you got nobody that was. I can't help you. You know, I just this watched. is the Big Twelve you're talking about. Yeah. Here. yeah, but it's minus Texas and Oklahoma. Yeah, but yeah, this is the Big Twelve you're talking about. But still, they're not. They're wearing a lot of first round draft I prospects am big that were, right now. Yeah, uh, it, you mentioned Texas running back from Texas, Jonathan Brooks. Okay, who's coming off an ACL? Yeah, um, he would be one to keep your yeah, eye on. Balling. Yeah, there's a lot balling. of people looking at yeah. him. Yeah. So, what about their? Didn't they have a backup guy that was? Well, and Tashard Choice is is producing running backs at yes. a record setting yes, pace. There, I noticed that. Tashard is the running backs coach at Texas, and in last year's is draft, he? yes, in last year's draft, That's pretty good. He had B. John Robinson, yeah. and Roshan Johnson, uh, who went to the Bears, and he also prior to coming to Texas, he was at Georgia Tech, and I was so he say, coached. We can't get rid of him now he, because he he's coached an Jameer Atlanta Gibbs, yeah. yeah, and so now he's got another uh, prospect who. There doesn't appear to be a running back that will likely go in the first round, but Jonathan Brooks of Texas is probably the top running back. If he, was, if he did, wasn't coming off the ACL, he'd be the, uh, yeah. for sure the, the yeah. top running back coming out. And was he the one that uh, Dr. Cooper did the ACL yes. surgery? Yes, that's right. So that's a name to remember. Hmm. Another name to remember that Savannah watched yesterday at the AAC. Who would that name to be remembered be? That would be... DJ Burns Jr., <laughs> who looked like a D lineman on the court, or he could with the. Now he's already. What is he listed at? He's six nine two seven. But he's probably more like six seven. Yeah, he's not six nine. Yeah, and he's, and he's how, not what was the seventy five either. <laughs> He's a he tank. Is so is he a defensive lineman or is he an offensive tackle? You know what? I just read something. D that, lineman. Uh, no. People were looking at him as an offensive tackle. I was going to say, you want an offensive lineman with good feet like that? Uh huh. Yeah. Yes, I'd say offensive lineman. That's Ooh. what I would say. And uh -huh. he's left handed. Well, so that, what, I don't know if that helps. <laughs> does that mean he's not going to throw it out there? Does that mean he plays left tackle? <laughs> But you know what? Well, we said last week, a week ago, see, my uh, sister, who is a loyal listener to Mix Shots. Oh, wow. Uh, although apparently hey, not apparently not in the off season, because <laughs> she, she texted me yesterday and said, this uh, dude for uh, NC State, uh, he looks like he could play in the NFL. And I said, did yeah. you not listen to Mix Shots last week? We talked about him last week, that he needed to go to the Big 12 Pro Days, and then you would have yeah. a first-round prospect here. So when I was reading, I was reading something about him today, this morning, 
And how about this for a misprint? It said he poured in 29 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> not points. Instead of points. Yeah. <laughs> That's not they're, cool. They're thinking of that mo- is not how cool. big he is. That right? is a Freudian but slip. But he's got big great feet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I read Could you where imagine him pulling around there? Somebody huh? Could you mm-hmm. imagine him on a pull? Somebody mm-hmm. called Jim Nagy, the director of the Senior Bowl, mm-hmm. to kind of ask about him. And he said he got texts from several NFL GMs, assistant GMs, and scouting director expressing interest in him if he doesn't go to the NBA. I'm I'm sure. And they're looking at him probably as an offensive tackle, Mm -hmm. which made me think back to Rayfield Wright. Uh, If you remember, when he went to Fort Fort Valley Valley State, State, Mm -hmm. he went as a basketball player. He sure did. And the football coach had to basically bribe him to go play football. Mm -hmm. And after his junior year, the Cincinnati Royals drafted him in the first round. Mm -hmm. He was going to go and play with Oscar Robertson. Is that crazy? Right? Have you heard them tell that story? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's crazy, man. (laughs) And uh, he went back because he had promised his mom that he would graduate college. Right. So he passed up an NBA career as... Well, let's look at big man. So, Junior, CJ Junior, DJ, what's his name? DJ Burns. DJ Burns. Burns. Who is who is not quite as big as his dad, so he's got room to grow. Oh, don't say that. What you need is, <laughs> when you go to the NFL at that size, how long do you think he can last on the NBA level? I mean, you're talking NCAA, and he's really dominating. But how long do you think someone at that size can in, last oh, in I the see. NBA in a game. I, I so, don't think a long in a time. season. I don't think a long in a, time. just a, a season. Well, and especially, and I'm not trying to diminish his abilities yeah. at all. But it's tough to get up and down the field you know, on an NBA level at that size. So everyone is obviously optimistic or pessimistic, however you want to look at it, yeah. and say that's going to be his next choice is coming to the NFL. Well, it's funny you mentioned that because. I watched him not only this week, but the previous weekend. Uh, in fact, they played Texas Tech in the first game, and Tech couldn't handle not only him, but the other post players they had. But mm-hmm. anyway, so I'm watching him the last two weeks, and I can't get Oliver Miller out of my yes. mind. Yes, of course. I mean, and, Absolutely. And, and, and as yes. a matter of fact, this is That's before, a compliment. Yeah, and yeah. Oliver Miller in 1990 – at Reunion Arena in Dallas, Watch Arkansas that. played Texas in the Elite Eight. And I'm sitting there yesterday afternoon. It's like history is yeah. repeating itself yeah. here. <laughs> 34 years later, there's the big O, Oliver yeah. Miller, playing again in downtown Dallas with a chance to go to the Final Four. And uh, and Arkansas went to the Final Four back then, and now yep. Uh, yep. DJ Burns is. But to your point on – I was just looked up Oliver Miller in his NBA career. He played – in the NBA from 1992 to 2010. Uh, no, wait a second. That's not right. No way. He, he That can't be right. 12 years? No, How 2010 much? is incorrect. Now, he played, okay, he played it. Uh, get this, on Oliver Miller. He played 92 through 2000 in the NBA, and then he played for the, I don't, can't even pronounce the name, <laughs> the Southern California Surf, the Gary Steelheads, the Dodge City Legend, wow. the Dakota Wizards, the and then he, uh, other names overseas I can't pronounce and, uh, until 2010. But anyway, there's a picture of him at a uh, uh, later in life mm-hmm. where he was pushing probably four bills. Wow. And he uh, and I'm a, my suggestion to DJ Burns is make sure you stay on <laughs> stay away from elliptical machine. Yeah. <laughs> well, oh he's gosh. he's sort of built, um, kind of strangely. He's big from the hips up. Mm-hmm. His, but legs his legs are small. Are not that big. That's good. That's why. That's why he's able to maneuver so well. Yeah. yeah he, I mean, his you feet are I mean, great. You're big enough already up top. You do need nimble legs. I mean, he's he seems to be nimble in his legs. So, do you think, as uh, the Cowboys reported back today, and other NFL teams report back to work in the office today, and they're just over, uh, they're doing the same thing. We're the water right. cooler saying, "What do you think about yeah. this guy?" That's you know, right. and they're probably having the same conversation. You've only had two guys that I, two other guys that I can think of. Uh, Oliver Miller and uh, Big Baby from LSU. Mm. Oh, Glenn Davis. Glenn Davis. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I think that's the only two that I mean to where really big. Yeah, and Davis wasn't nearly as big as 
I don't think he was big as uh, Miller. And he seems to have the nature that could play football because mm-hmm. he's pretty serious. He's not out there being he's goofy. Smart. He's smart. Well, he's the smart. way he could even block and then push some people back, mm-hmm. like to get into a certain area that he needed or to make a pass, like yeah. it looked almost like he had the stance to play. They say football. offensive linemen are the most intellectual on the team. He also he Fr- Nate be Frisco a guy. would agree with I'm that. I'm sure he would. <laughs> but he By would, the way, he he's definitely also, listening. I was going to say speaking of that, yeah, we need I, to talk to I spoke with him. Okay. And How's he, he doing? He was doing well. Uh, the last thing I heard, he goes, I'm having some good days and bad days. But uh, I talked to him. So he had surgery on Tuesday. I talked to him on Friday, and he was hoping to go home on Saturday. Uh, but he was already starting his rehab. I yeah. said, when did you start your rehab? He goes, Tuesday afternoon, Tuesday night. <laughs> and this <laughs> is already? knee replacement surgery? Dual knee yeah. replacement. Okay, both knees. Had both knees done. Uh, so... I was Basically, thinking about him this morning. The knees are good. He's just got to recover from the surgery mm-hmm. and, you know, going through the whole deal. But, yes. uh, yeah, he did it. Nate and Frisco. Well, Nate, uh, I don't know. I heard Nate could dunk a basketball back at the Florida a and I believe that. I believe it, too. Yeah, mm-hmm. I heard that from several sources. So could you imagine him, I think, at the time around 285, 290? Dunking the basketball. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Larry Allen. Ask him about it. <laughs> when he had his tryout at Sonoma State, the uh, guy that brought him in that did the scouting and basically got him out of um, uh, South L.A., and he told the head coach at Sonoma State that I got this great athlete, and uh, I've heard that he can dunk a basketball. And the head coach was like, yeah, yeah, okay, another one of these. So they bring him in. Larry shows it up in a all-white kind of silky warm-up suit, right? And uh, the assistant He was co- making an impression. The assistant <laughs> coach goes, okay, go show the coach you can dunk. He doesn't run. He stands underneath the basket and dunks the ball. And the head coach goes, yeah, we might be able to find a spot for him on our team. <laughs> and the rest is history. That's when you know athletes, baby. Now, when you look at DJ, if I was going to compare him to anyone physically, it would be Larry Allen. Yeah. Now, if I was going to do that, of course, he's a little taller, I guess, than Larry, but I would say that. Interesting. Same look. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, so – what else? Uh, we got a few, a couple of minutes. Two minute warning before our first break here. I've got a hypothetical I'm going to present to you in regards to quarterbacks, okay. uh, in just a little bit. But what else is oh, on your? Oh, by the way, and so this will just be some clerical work. But uh, the Cowboys off season programs phase one will begin April 15th. So what you see guys doing now is basically. Mm-hmm volunteer just doing strength and conditioning uh phase one is 12 days phase two three weeks and then the otas begin may 21st 23rd and as a reminder the cowboys only have two of those three-day sessions because they got penalized last year for being too rough (laughs) i forgot about that remember yeah wow yeah somebody complained so they only you get three. You get ten days right. of OTAs, but right. they only get two three-day sessions. Oh, so they got penalized like four, two years in a row. Four days or four days? Yeah, the, usually the tenth day. Before. Right. So they got basically got penalized three days. Yeah. So yeah. A, a one full session. week worth. One basically because they usually no money, do it. No money, just lack of uh, uh, just took uh, practice. Time I think more. Mike got fined because if you noticed when he did the coaches. A, d- a breakfast day interview mm-hmm. and he kind of just passing by said oh yeah uh, i saw dak uh, working out which he was <laughs> oh, yeah. just right this morning mm-hmm. and, right? and immediately somebody says well did you talk to him what did he have to say and he goes oh no no i just saw him i can't talk to him okay <laughs> there's rules I about make that, that clear i want to make that clear <laughs> i saw him <laughs> i saw him i didn't talk to him oh good news though hey uh, Zeke is coming back. Did you hear that? 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll get into that uh, when Bill teases whatever he's getting to tease. There's mutual interest. I know. There's a report out there. There's mutual interest. That's right. I heard. There should be. It, it, through the grapevine, I heard. He's also uh-huh. costing them $6 million in dead money. So you might as well have him here for that. <laughs> That's right. right. <laughs> if he'll play for 2 or $3 million. Which is what he did last year. He paid Why for he? $3 million last year since we ran down this mm-hmm. rabbit hole. Mm-hmm. Had 51% of the snaps, rushed for 642 yards, and had 51 catches for 313 and two I mean, touchdowns. Uh, from yards from scrimmage, he had nearly 1,000 yards last year. Right. Yo, um, Yoma's work last year. That was Yoma's work. And they lost their lead running back, Demandre. Is it Stevens, something like that? Oh, no, he's still with him, Ramondre Stevens. Yeah, I mean, but he... He they, was injured. Oh, you mean injured. he was injured yeah. during yeah. the season. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, so but Zeke ended Zeke up is being better. the guy. Zeke, I'm telling you, Zeke is better. I, I know Ramondre Stevenson because he played at Oklahoma, and I, there are things that Ramondre Stevenson can do. Zeke's a better running back than Ramondre Stevenson, even now. I'm, I would endorse it fully. I'm not saying you don't. If Jonathan Brooks is there, you know. <laughs> but they need a veteran guy. That's well, what I want, a veteran guy. That's what I want. And his agents start to throw. And they've got Rico throw, Dowdle coming back. They're starting yeah. to throw chum out there mm-hmm. where everybody's going, oh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cowboys are interested. Because I mean, if the yeah. Cowboys are interested, <laughs> by God, everybody else should. Well, here's him. the other thing. If um, And he still lives here. From But from Zeke's perspective, the one of the main reasons, he knows that he – He's not going to – any of the running backs out there are not going to command any amount of money beyond what Zeke made last year for mm-hmm. sure, and mm-hmm. probably less than that. Mm-hmm. Why would Zeke go sign anywhere else as long as there's a glimmer of hope that he could come back here? And he lives no mm-hmm. state income mm-hmm. tax. Right. So – Kyron Smith – Gonna by, pay that state income tax <laughs> in New York. Oh yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and by the way, the Cowboys have announced for the 2024 Cowboys Draft Weekend, yes. presented by Miller Lite. It was just uh, the release out this morning. They announced the uh, events for the uh, draft party, which kicks off 6:30 on Thursday, April 25th, and continues for all three days of the draft on Tostita Plaza, Tostitos Championship Plaza. Okay, when we come back, I've got a uh, little hypothetical that has to do with quarterbacks. And remember the trade that the Kansas City Chiefs made in the draft about seven years ago? Let me throw that out for your consternation here on Mix Shots in just a moment. I'm Dak Prescott, quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. And they snap at the Prescott who looks right. It's not there. He escapes left. He'll run for a first down. Just like football, when it comes to crypto, it's important to have a team you can trust. With blockchain.com, I know I'm in good hands. Since 2011, they've been trusted by millions around the world to buy, sell, and trade cryptocurrency. Prescott's going to run this himself. Run it up the middle, and he scores. Whether you're new to crypto or an active trader, they've got you covered. What are you waiting for? Get started at blockchain.com. We know that juicy, cheesy, grilled-to-perfection burger sounds amazing, but it does sound like something is missing. Pepsi, baby! The yin to this burger's yang. Burgers and Pepsi go together like, well, like burgers and Pepsi. This perfect blending of flavors makes every bite of lettuce, every sesame seed on the bun, and every sip of that crisp, refreshing, ice-cold cola. A journey to Foodopia. Burgers, better with Pepsi. That's what I like. The Medal of Honor is our country's highest military award for valor in combat. More than 40 million individuals have served in the armed forces since the Civil War. Fewer than 4,000 have received the Medal of Honor. The National Medal of Honor Museum will be a place to preserve these legacies and inspire America. It's being built right next door to the Dallas Cowboys in Texas. Help us honor our country's greatest heroes. Learn more and get involved at mohmuseum.org. Did you know that responding to one spam call can lead to more? Or that the IRS would never ask for your social security number on the phone? Beat scammers at their own game by subscribing to AARP Fraud Watch Network alerts and texts. At aarp.org slash beatscammerstx, you can sign up to receive information that helps you recognize and avoid the latest scams. 
That's aarp.org slash beatscammers tx. Back, back to mixed shots. K Post Roofing and Waterproofing, the official roofer of the Dallas Cowboys. Mm. Which, by the way, Post is their last name that owned the company. There's a TV commercial out now. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I believe it's Nick Post is the son. I forgot what the dad's name okay. might have been. <laughs> we're going we're to look this up. We're just look it as up. an uh-huh. aside to <laughs> K-Post Roofing and Waterproofing. Okay, got that cleared up. As we continue with Mixed Shots, brought to you by Miller Lite. Mm-hmm. All right. What's the, what's the latest on the situation with Dak and the Cowboys? Um, nothing. Uh, they only restructured the five million dollar roster bonus, so it saved them like four million dollars. But as for a contract, they keep saying, "Yeah, they want to do it, but they're in no hurry." And I don't know if that's a negotiating ploy, like we've given you an offer mm-hmm. that you didn't accept, and so we're not in any hurry. And if they're trying to put the pressure on them to maybe take less, or they're just not in a hurry to re-sign him and let him play the final year mm-hmm. of his contract. It okay. kind of reminds you of the last uh, in, uh, negotiation. Except right? they can't franchise him. Mm-hmm. And, they can't. and when they wound up signing him to the contract extension, it was before free agency began. And there's a no-trade clause, too. But go ahead with your scenario. Well... So, we're going to assume nothing gets done on the con- on a contract extension before draft day, right? And uh, we don't know where things stand. I mean, we outside of what they're saying publicly, which is that Dak is going to be the quarterback here going forward, mm-hmm. and they just have to work something out, whatever. But there's there's been no talk that Dak would not be the quarterback here in 2025, right, and beyond. However. You do have a quarterback that's going into the last year of his contract, and as you pointed out, you can't franchise him. He could walk in March. Mm-hmm. So does that in any way change the Cowboys' thinking going into the draft this year as far as quarterback? Now, they do have Trey Lance, and we don't know for sure how they feel about Trey Lance, although we think they like him, and he could he's your young quarterback that you've invested in in terms of giving up a draft pick. Do they like him in regards to being a potential starter, or do they like know. him in regards well, we to don't. what they can get for yeah. him? Well, we may find out if... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if there's a holdout, are you suggesting? Are we... Or Oh, there there you go. That's the other option there. Yep. So, uh, so, that so is, is there... What does that do as far as the draft goes this year? It's a, apparently a deep um, quarterback draft. Do you ponder taking a quarterback, considering where your quarterback is contractually right now? Oh, I think. I mean, you got to qualify it with you talking second day, third day, just somewhere in the draft. Let me throw out a scenario. All right, go ahead. <laughs> you Here knew we, we had something in mind. <laughs> That's why I wasn't going to commit. <laughs> And, and, and I'm not proposing this. I'm just throwing out a scenario. In fact, I think Dak should be the quarterback here for years to come. Okay. But take you back to the Kansas City Chiefs in 2017. They had a veteran 32 year old quarterback named Alex Smith coming off a Pro Bowl season in 2016. And. They were picking, I believe, 25th in the draft, somewhere in the same neighborhood that the Cowboys are at 24. And Andy Reid fell in love with a quarterback out of Texas Tech named Patrick Mahomes. And he and others on the staff there in Kansas City. And uh, so when Patrick Mahomes is available at number 10 in the draft, he decides they pull the trigger and they traded their first round pick and a third round pick plus next year's number one, the 2018 number one, to Buffalo to move up to number 10 and they took Patrick Mahomes. 
which now in hindsight, seven years later, might be the greatest draft day trade <laughs> in the history of football. And maybe I should sure. take the might be out of that. That is the greatest draft day trade in the history of football, wouldn't you say? Great train yeah. robbery. Uh, all right. No, no uh, Dorsett. Remember Tony Dorsett when he came How here? How many Super Bowls did Tony Dorsett win? Two. One. 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 As how, a many, how many has Patrick Mahomes won? <laughs> <laughs> how many? Uh, three. Three. Yeah. Uh, at least three. I'm with you, Bella. I think it's the best, best draft. Right? All right. So, and, and by the way, by the way, in that same draft, Deshaun Watson went number 12. I mean, what were they thinking in mm-hmm. that draft? Mm-hmm. Anyway, and Mitchell Trubisky went number two. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> what were they thinking? <laughs> so, time. so anyway. Let me just throw it out there. there. There's talk that there could be six quarterbacks taken in the top 12 picks in this draft. If there is someone who thinks that, let's say, J.J. McCarthy or Bo Nix or whatever is the next Patrick Mahomes, I'm not saying they are, mm-hmm. but if you are, if you think that there is a Patrick Mahomes in this draft, would you, considering where you are with your quarterback situation right now, would you do what the Kansas City Chiefs did in 2017 and trade your first and a third and next year's number one to go get Patrick Mahomes at number 10? No. And by the way, you could put the Cowboys in that scenario in 2017. They drafted Taco Charlton in the first round. The third round pick was Jordan Lewis. They didn't. They wound up not having a 2018 number one because they had to trade it for Amari Cooper uh, later that year. How far did they move? They went. They went like fifteen spots from tw- from twenty fifth to tenth, something like that. How long did it take for Mahomes to win his first Super Bowl? And then Mahomes did not play his first year. Mm-hmm. Alex Smith stayed as the quarterback, mm-hmm. and then Alex Smith left after twenty seventeen. By the way, Alex Smith was a Pro Bowler in twenty seventeen, yeah. while Mahomes was on the bench and just played the last game of the season. Mm-hmm. And then the the franchise was his in twenty eighteen. So they didn't get rid of. They didn't do it. Uh, Instantly, I mean, it, right? It, they wait till right. next year, the right. next year, and get which rid is of. what, what? It, if Patrick Mahomes was in this draft and the Cowboys decided to do that, that would be what the Cowboys. Yeah, would I mean, do, I could know. take that scenario. I thought, based on no. what you talked about, I thought it happened that particular no, year. That they, no, no. So then that quarterback sits for a year. That's fine. That'd be fine with me. So you would, you would, if if you if felt someone, like if, if you I felt, felt like, like if you were so sold on one of the quarterbacks that you think this is Patrick Mahomes mm-hmm, right here mm-hmm. you would trade your first and a third and next year's number 1 to move up to number 10 to take him he better be damn good he better be he better be damn because good because there's a and, but that the Kansas City Chiefs were in the same scenario that the Cowboys are right now and they're just so happened to be the greatest quarterback in the history of the game perhaps who they Everyone else couldn't see, but mm-hmm. Andy Reid saw. And uh, how many of those scenarios did you find that backfired? Yeah, right. There's exactly. plenty of them. Well, exactly. my of them. my stance on this is we have a quarterback right now that has been sitting out since he got here, and that's Trey Lance. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. let's say a year from now in March, Dak. You know, you have to look a different direction. I almost think not drafting a quarterback, or if you do it super late sixth seventh round whatever but you know with Trey Lance who has had not a lot of development time to actually play I say you give him the opportunity to see what he can almost do as a backup it's kind of hard to ignore the fact that we already do have Trey Lance Mm -hmm. yeah and and we have needs in other places for this roster and that's where you utilize the draft I don't think it Trading just, up for a quarterback is ideal for the Cowboys It just plays at this time. to the fact that you just never know with these guys whether, whether they're going. Let's pan let's out look at not. Trey Lance though. I mean, how good is he, guys? I think we don't. We know. just need we to we gotta figure Nobody, that out. Yeah, he could be <laughs> the the next Patrick Mahomes. We don't this, know. <laughs> I think this preseason is going to be very important to find that find out that answer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, that, yeah, they need to see what he can do. And right. by the they way, really if do. Mahomes had been thrown in, had to play that first year, what it would could have, have, it may have? It could have ruined his career. Kansas City ended up – didn't they end up winning 
They were good that 27 well, the, under Well, like Alex I said, Smith. Alex Smith made the Pro Bowl in 27. They couldn't yeah. have been that bad. Yeah. yeah. And then I think he was a free eight. No. They traded him to Washington. And Alex then, Smith. And, and then in Washington, got, he got That's hurt he in got Washington. Hurt. He got hurt right. in Washington, right. yes. And then he was the comeback player of the year in 2020 in right. Washington. So, I mean, he wasn't washed up in his career at that point. But he wasn't Patrick Mahomes. But they traded a – you said he was a pro bowler that year? Mm-hmm. Mahomes made it to the AFC Championship game and lost to uh, Brady his first year. That was in 2018. We're started. talking 2017. Right. Well, yeah. 17, no, but, yeah. But, yeah, what Chris says, that, that I want to hear that. His first year starting, he oh, they yeah. did go. I mean, he was ready to he, go. Yeah, yeah, he went, yeah. Apparently, Mahomes in practice was like – would carve up the defense, and everybody's like, "Okay, this is our guy." Right. And that's kind of right. why they pulled the trigger on mm-hmm. sending uh, the other uh, quarterback. To well, Washington. they had already decided. I mean, if you're trading your first and your third and next year's number one, Patrick Mahomes was going to be the quarterback mm-hmm. in 2018. But they knew they had Alex Smith for one more year to, and they were going to. So this is interesting. So let's say we need to find out about Trey Lance, just like you said. Let's say they start putting him in there and. He's carving up the defense, mm-hmm. you know. We don't know what's going. On. Yeah, yep. you just, I mean, you, then Dak hasn't signed yet. You know, it makes things interesting. Yeah, mm-hmm. it just makes things interesting. So they have three preseason games, right? They reduced it to three. Do you say, okay, we're not playing Dak in two of them for sure? Do you give Trey Lance the majority of those, knowing you know what Cooper Rush can do? Do you say, okay, we got to find out? Which is a tough decision to make because you got to have your backup ready. Yeah. I can think, he win the backup job? I don't think it's all about the preseason games. I think it, part of the decision on whether you give them the first two games or whatever is what they've already seen yeah. here in his time that's in the last six months that he's been here Mm -hmm. and then in the off season program, it's the command. um, Does does he show those types of intangibles? Well, what have you heard? Has he shown it? Has he done? Let's remember he ended up winning the starting job in San Francisco before he got hurt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what caused Purdy to get the opportunity to play. Mm -hmm. Right. Because he, he won the job, and it was like a game or two into that year. But he wasn't doing that well. Well, he never was healthy. Yeah, I was just saying. But, but the, uh, the thing is, he but was they were gonna doing go, But right. they were going to go with him. Right, right, right. They decided he was the starter. And what I mean is I'm comparing him to the Patrick Mahomes scenario is what I'm saying. Right. He didn't show any Patrick Mahomes abilities. And I'm saying since he's been here, have, what have what's the word? What's the... I mean, you know. he's barely had an an, uh, an opportunity to totally showcase his skills mm-hmm. so he's, far while he's been here. And so, you know, obviously, whatever the coaches see and how he's practicing out there, you know, they could be looking at him and say, hey, you right. know, we need to develop him more. And I mm-hmm. think that's going to go into training camp this year. And then those preseason games, I, I say you give him some of those games. He's You've worked. got a quarterback that was, was almost MVP. He's worked he hard. They don't need to look at Dak much at all this offseason. They need to look at their two backups. He throws Agreed. a nice football. Mm-hmm. And he's athletic. Right? So I'm forgetting who they played towards the end of the year that they needed a mobile quarterback to run the scout team. Uh, the Cowboys? Yeah. What – would they have had him do Tua or Jordan Love? I just remember asking him because I heard that he was running. He's going to be that quarterback that He was that being week. that quarterback. Yeah, he, um, his, his size, 6'4", 226, he's, a, he's Jordan Love-like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, here's the other thing that's interesting about Trey Lance. When you look at the quarterbacks in this draft, a bunch of them are like 24 years old. I mean, the, the, of the first-round prospects. In fact, Caleb Williams turns 23 in November. Now, Drake May's younger. He's, he's 21, doesn't turn 22 to August. McCarthy old. Jaden Daniels, he's 23. He'll be 24 on December what? 18th. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, they're a lot older. All right. Trey I Lance. he was a young guy. Trey Lance turns 24 on May 9th. He's 23. Wow. He's just six months wow. 
older than Jaden Daniels. Mm. Okay, basically seven months older than Jaden Daniels. Um, Michael Penix turns 24 on May 8th. All right, Trey Lance turns 24 on May 9th. Michael Penix, who's considered a first-round prospect in this draft, turns 24 the day before Trey Lance does. On May 8th, he turns 24. Bo Nix already turned 24. Oh, he's old. Yeah, we know he was old. Well, he's he's two months. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's, uh, what? Uh, he's played college no, no, for like six years of college but football. But Penix has two. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Bo Nix, Bo Nix is two months older than Penix. Bo Nix is two months older than Trey Lance. What about J.J. Okay. McCarthy? You got it. J.J. McCarthy is young. Oh, he is? He's 21. Okay. Oh. Yeah. No, and, so and he's like, he literally, and I think that's one of the reasons – that J.J. McCarthy is getting so much buzz right, right so now young. is because he's like three years younger than Knicks, than Penix, than Jaden Daniels. What about yeah. it, So to me, that I'm, people I'm sorry, think that, that, okay, there's this great upside because he's so much younger. In you know? that regard, I think it's the opposite. I'd rather right. go with an older, more exactly. experienced right. quarterback coming out of college. But so I'm glad we brought this up because it could be, and I'm not saying Trey Lance is Patrick Mahomes, but – the Cowboys right now may have the equivalent in the house right now. That's what we were talking about. The equivalent exactly of we Michael about. Penix or right. Bo Nix mm -hmm. or Jaden Daniels or any of these guys. He's, he's, had the, NFL, he's, the exact, he's actually had NFL experience. He's right. been here. Yeah. He knows he had, what, he's what is going on. He's played two yeah. NFL games at least. Yeah. It, ta <laughs> it takes longer development time for these other quarterbacks coming into the draft mm -hmm. to get in here and understand what it's like to play All in right. the league. Let's just say Trey Lance did what Michael Penix, what Bo Nix did, what uh, uh, Caleb Williams transferred. Okay, let's say instead of turning pro in 2020 or whatever year he came out, he decided to transfer from North Dakota State instead. And he got the COVID year, and now he's in this draft. Where would Number one, what would he have done in his college career? Yeah. I guarantee you he would have blown it up. Yeah, he would. He would have the same stats that all these guys have, and he'd be right there in the mix, and we'd be talking he about – He would have killed be, it during the combine. We'd be yeah. talking about seven quarterbacks going yeah. to the top 12 picks <laughs> instead of yeah. six. Let me throw this out since we're talking about quarterbacks that get older. How old was Tony Romo when he first got his start in 2006? Okay, I'm going to look that up for you. You vamp for just a moment. And you might even check to see when he became the official he, backup in 2000. His birthday is April 21st. He was born in 1980. So, and he would have been uh, 26 and a half years old when he became the Cowboys' starting quarterback in the 2006 season. Mm -hmm. And he ended up being the backup in 2005, but never really got to play. And so he was 25 yeah. then. 25. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about Roger Staubach? Well, yeah, he's... he was forty. <laughs> 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 All right, All but right. no, that's a, that's a good point because it's you're looking at these different age groups and categories, and um, you know it all plays a part in how many years these guys have been into the league and really what you know might be the best age group that starts fitting into those premier quarterback positions. And if you think about it, Romo never established himself as Romo until he got to play in some preseason games. Mm -hmm. And it was like, oh, maybe this guy's got something. Because I remember his rookie year, he couldn't hit the broad side of a barn. He was so inaccurate. <laughs> that was Parcells. It wasn't crazy about him either. No. <laughs> you know, and, and, but they kept him as the third guy. And then he's going to get cut the next year, and then they they you know cut Quincy Carter, mm -hmm. got fed up with him, mm -hmm. and he he would have been the fourth quarterback that year, uh, had the, had Quincy Carter remained the starter. Staubach was 28 when he made his first appearance in an NFL game 69. in 1970, and 70. he wasn't even starting. You just said eight game eight games, three starts in 1970. He uh, got hurt. Um, and so he was 28 years old then. And um, and that season, Craig Morton was the starting quarterback mm -hmm. in the Super Bowl. In 71, uh, Staubach took over and at age 29 won the Super Bowl. When were they doing the alternating so, uh, possessions? That was in the, the 71 season. 71 season. That was a disaster. And then, 
And in no, it six, wasn't a disaster. It's just, no, <laughs> yeah. go ahead, go ahead. it wasn't ahead. a disaster because <laughs> after that game, a loss to the Chicago Bears, Landry had to make the decision to go with one over the other, and it was he Roger. He put himself in that position. It was Roger. It was Roger, and they won ten straight games and won the Super Bowl. So. <laughs> It turned into Tom. Gold. Just he just he hated he, pulling that trigger, didn't he? That's right. So that's I'm leading right. the league in interceptions from the bench, man. I'm still mad about that. That's right. Come on. <laughs> oh, I don't trust him yet. Ah, damn, coach, what you need, right. brother? Like like Randy White <laughs> right. had to wait. Dorsey on, had man. to wait. Like Come Everson Wall. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Everson Wall. Yeah. Golly. <laughs> Tony Dorsett. <laughs> yep. Was and, not an immediate starter. So well, crazy. Staubach would have got there in '69. And also. Patrick Mahomes had to wait, too. <laughs> so there you go. And now Trey Lance is having to wait also. We can only we, we, hope we've that got, Trey we, Lance. We've got our, we, we might we've got have our Patrick, Patrick Mahomes, Mahomes right, right here. here. He's right. in the house right now. In the All right. We figured it out. All right. So don't draft a quarterback. We've already got one. He's in the house right now, and he's the next Patrick Mahomes. And we continue with more mixed shots. Brought to you by Miller Lite in just a moment. The Medal of Honor is our country's highest military award for valor in combat. More than 40 million individuals have served in the armed forces since the Civil War. Fewer than 4,000 have received the Medal of Honor. The National Medal of Honor Museum will be a place to preserve these legacies and inspire America. It's being built right next door to the Dallas Cowboys in Texas. Help us honor our country's greatest heroes. Learn more and get involved at mohmuseum.org. Cowboys football and Miller Lite. What a pairing. Can cracks a kickoff. Tailgates going way past postgame. Sunday night overtimes followed by Monday morning swagger. Brisket in the smoker. Miller Lite in the cooler. America's team playing America's greatest sport. Miller Lite, the only beer of the Dallas Cowboys. Dallas Cowboys football tastes like Miller time. Celebrate responsibly. 2023 Miller Brewing Company, Fort Worth, Texas. Did you know that responding to one spam call can lead to more? Or that the IRS would never ask for your social security number on the phone? Beat scammers at their own game by subscribing to AARP Fraud Watch Network alerts and texts. At aarp.org slash beatscammerstx, you can sign up to receive information that helps you recognize and avoid the latest scams. That's aarp.org slash beatscammerstx. You know that sound anywhere. It's the crisp crunch of that first nacho chip. With its perfect cheese to sour cream ratio sitting atop a layer of delicious beans, it's a sip away from perfection. That's what we're looking for. Add a delicious, refreshing Pepsi, and we've achieved absolute nacho nirvana. Because while you can pile those nachos high with every spicy, cheesy, savory topping, there's no topping a cool Pepsi finish. Nachos, better with Pepsi. That's what I like. Back, back to mixed shots. The 11th annual Reliant Home Run Derby is back at Riders Field in Frisco on May 1st at 6 p.m. Come see your favorite Dallas Cowboys players swing for the fences to raise money for the Salvation Army. Admission and parking are free. Visit DallasCowboys.com slash Reliant HRD to learn more. See you there. Good job, as always. Thank you. Um, one thing about the uh, UFL games I was surprised by on Saturday, although I didn't sit there and watch a lot, but I did see something. They aren't using the kickoff rule? That well, the see, it was weird. NFL adopted? They used the USFL rule, but then I saw towards the end of the game they went to the XFL rule. Oh, they did? One time I saw it. Because they kicked off and they were they were lined up five yards apart from each other at the forty at the at the receiving team 40, 40, 35 yeah. yard line. Yeah. So, so they did. They did. They did it use just it. one time because the other kick. Off, that's why I turned it on. I wanted to see it. Mm -hmm. And they kicked off normally. So is it optional that like you can pick which how how I I would have to ask somebody on you that. know yeah. I, All right, here's I, what I'm, I'm very confused on that because they made a big deal about it, and now they're yeah. not using it. And now it's implemented until this next season for the NFL. So, I saw it would I be interesting it, to know. I saw them kick off normally the one time. Uh -huh. That's crazy. 
Um, but then I saw the other way. Interesting. We'll have to get to the bottom of that. I'm mm. sure there are people shouting at their <laughs> podcast you right dumb now. dumb idiots. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. I, that's it was a case of I need to be more like an attorney when I ask a question. You I know the need answer. need to know the answer. Uh -huh. right? So... Uh, but we haven't had a chance. We talked about it last week, and after our show last week, they implemented it. They decided to go oh, with the right. kickoff rule. Mm -hmm. So now that it's official, what are you thinking? What do you mean, oh, that's right? I sent it to you. you when it would happen? Don't act surprised. <laughs> I sent that to you. I'm the, I'm the guy as soon as we finish all cars. <laughs> well, they, they, uh, they uh, voted it in on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why I said when I answered the question, I said, mm -hmm. no, you can listen to mix shots. We were ahead That's of the right. ball game. There. Okay. See, I needed a visual on it, so Producer Supreme helped me out and sent me what that looks like just because I needed to visualize how that mm -hmm. kickoff would work. But Oh, I'm, I'm for it. The kickoff was the most boring thing in the NFL. And the owners voted on it. They It was 29-3 uh, to 3 yeah. on the vote. So, yeah. And they needed 24 to mm -hmm. uh, approve it. So it's a one-year deal, so it's temporary, and we're going to see how it goes. Um, it's, I, I think it's going to be maybe, I'm not going to say a lot, but there's a lot for the officials to look at, mm -hmm. like jumping off sides. The kick's got to be between the 20 and the goal line. Uh you know, just how the whole thing, no one moves before the ball either is caught or hits the ground. Uh, there's a lot for the officials to have to digest on these kickoffs. No longer just looking to see that no one's off sides. Right. right? Um, and the Do they have more referees on the field than NFL? I doubt it. Probably have less. Mm. Uh, or the same. But, yeah, they're going to have to be more aware of the kickoff instead of just running up, giving them the ball to put on the tee, and then everybody gets in place, right? And they look for a block in the back or a hold on the return that doesn't happen. Uh, well, I have just a suggestion. I say as a collective group here, maybe we all take an outing to one of the Arlington Renegades games, and we'll check it out I'm ourselves. Not that you guys, man, <laughs> ruin my reputation. <laughs> well, sit in the stands. <laughs> Douglas and I went to one of those, the XFL game. At, at, so uh, fun. At Globe Light, is it Stadium, the old one? I think the one time I went, it Choctaw was Stadium. God Choctaw. awful hot, and I was I did not have a good time. It was burning up. That was not good. Well, what did you expect? Yeah. <laughs> you lived here for 60 years Jeez. or so. Should not be football in the summertime. All right, I'm going to have to do more research on this UFL kid. Yeah. I can't do it during the show. <laughs> um, all right. I have it if you want it. Would you like it? Sure. The, okay, producer so Supreme. it says, sorry, producer supreme. <laughs> It says, I'm sorry, I just lost it. Mm. Oh, you got to keep mm. that tag producer supreme. You'll find it. <laughs> yeah, give uh, me a second. Okay, all right. In the meantime, Mickey, what else is on your legal pad? Well, I've got a lot, but we're getting close to the we end. we got seven it'll, minutes. It'll take too much time. Well, give us a tease for next week then. Um, so my column on Friday, the Cowboys keep talking about uh, draft and develop. Uh, Stephen keeps mentioning that we need young guys to step up. So I went through the roster to look at all the young guys that they're going to need stuff out of, right? Because they're not going to be able to participate in free agency unless somebody just comes out of here and signs out of the grace of their heart, right, to take a $2 million deal. Which, by the way, on Jonathan Hankins, I understand the Cowboys. I mean, he didn't get much from the Seahawks, mm -hmm. but it sounded like he wanted to play for Aiden Dirty because mm. he became the defensive coordinator for the Seahawks mm -hmm. because they were willing to match that, and it wasn't much. It's all about who you know, Spence. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, I was just looking at, and, and we'll, we'll just tease it with, 
the offensive line. Uh, if you're looking at young guys that they need to step up, I mean, right now, Brock Hoffman is your center. I don't know where they're going to find a center uh, in the draft. You draft a center that high into the first round. They drafted Travis Frederick. And they did, and it was a good move. Is there a Travis Frederick out there? Is Jackson Powers Johnson Travis Frederick? Oh, he's in the notebook. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. Well, See, that's he why, made This is why he notebook. wanted you to do this. He brought the notebook. He has no iPad. He set this up. He yeah. brought the notebook because that's his only relevance to this show. Right? Okay. <laughs> so the offensive, the offensive line needs two starters. You need either, either a, a tackle or a guard in the center or a tackle in the center. All right, so let me ask so you this. So on this team. Would you, would you <laughs> yes, draft? Yes, I would. Would you draft <laughs> you an go. offensive tackle at 24, and would you trade your second and third round pick to move up to early second round or whatever to, to get, who, to get a, a center? That's a, that's a high price. Isn't it? Well, is you're trying it? to shore up your offensive line. Is All right. It? But in, in the, let's say the top center slide is, is available at 34, <laughs> like where Demarcus Lawrence was picked. Okay. And the Cowboys, when they went to get Demarcus Lawrence in 2014, they, they packaged their second and third, moved up to 34, and took Lawrence. All right. You've already taken your tackle at 24. Now, would you take your second and third round pick to go get that center? So the point. I was making <laughs> was, do you have somebody on your roster mm -hmm. that saves you a second and third round pick? Okay. Can Brock Hoffman do it? Can TJ Bass play guard if Tyler Smith moves, moves to out tackle. to tackle? Mm -hmm. And then you've got to look at, well, let's go Ball and Awesome Richards. So can you develop guys to take critical spots on your roster and those are decisions that they're going to have to be right at when they make and it. And who was our offensive line coach? Mike Solari. Mike Solari. Can he do it? Can he develop these yes, guys? Yes, can he develop these guys? They like Brock Hoffman. Mm -hmm. Now they got to decide and you got to be right. Is, is he, he as a second year player undrafted rookie can he start at center for you? Mm -hmm. And is that better or as good as what I get in the draft? And so what do you want in the draft, Bill? Well, have you, would you like a history lesson on Mike Solari and who he's I sure would. Thank you. Yes, because he didn't answer the question. That's right. Yeah. In Kansas City, okay, this is going back to 1997. He was the offensive line coach with the Kansas City Chiefs. And – in fact, in 99, they drafted a tackle, John Tate, with a 14th overall pick. But in 2002, he coached Willie Rofe. Willie Rofe, a Hall of Famer, who had, he came over at age 32, mm -hmm. okay, who was a former first-round draft pick from 1993. All right. He also, on that offensive line, by the way, he had Brian Waters starting at left guard, who's a lot like Tyler Smith, mm -hmm. okay, and was a six-time Pro Bowler out of Watsahatchee, Texas. Mm. Uh, and he had others on that offensive line were, that were – I mean, it was one of the best offensive lines you could put together. He goes to Seattle in 2008, and who was the Hall of Famer that he coached there? Walter Jones, okay. Fast forward, he's with San Francisco. Joe Staley, six-time Pro mm -hmm. Bowler, Offensive tackle, who was a first-round draft pick, he coached there. Then in Seattle, Dwayne Brown, a five-time yes. Pro Bowler, yes. he coached him there. And here in Dallas, last year he had Tyron and, mm -hmm. and Tyler. And so. Tyler. Now, now, the only difference is Where the, those guys those are first-round yes. draft picks. Uh -huh. I want to know now, what can he, can he do with, with the Bass. younger guys. Yes, that what we can have. he do with those guys? That's what I want to know. Well. And, and, and just remember that in the early 90s, until Larry Allen got there as a second-round pick, nobody was drafted higher than Eric Williams as a third-round pick. Yeah, man. So they took just guys. 
Nate Newton shows up in 86, right? <laughs> Ends up being a pro bowler. I remember bowl, that day. <laughs> right? Mark Tooney shows up in 83, not drafted. Not drafted. And these guys, over time, built one of the best offensive lines in the NFL. So true. Step and it, did, it did not happen right away. Step it did was not happen right pick, away. And that was before right? free agency, and so they had time they right sure on did. their hands. They sure did. They, they used that time well. I think Gogan was maybe a seventh round pick. Um, so, <laughs> and you, one of the funniest guys you, ever. <laughs> you just can't have a first round pick at every position on your offensive line. You already have, well, you have two, right? Mm -hmm. You had three when Tyron was there. Um, and. You know, the only difference between those guys in the 90s and the guys that you have right now, the guys in the 90s, they were funny. <laughs> All of them had great senses of humor. Tyler Smith has a great personality. He really He, he might be the only one. <laughs> uh, everyone else, they were they That's were close. Like. They were so funny. Yeah. Two, Mark Two and Nate was very funny. Actually, Nate you... Newton, Hillary Gogan was out of his mind. Right, that's right. <laughs> Those guys were funny. So we found what it takes to become a Super Bowl <laughs> offensive line. Nate you was be funny. Have some Nate, funny guys. Come on. Nate is the Nate's He's the still leader. Funny. Nate's the leader. <laughs> Crawford Kerr was funny. Yes, he was. Uh -huh. Crawford Kerr was funny. Uh -huh. Now he owns a bunch of wing joints. Uh -huh. Yeah, come on. Hey, <laughs> hey, Daddy, it ain't me. <laughs> when Aikman lined up behind him in the game instead of the center, he turns around and goes, hey, Daddy, it ain't me. <laughs> come on, man. Stop. I mean, that's just Stop. off the cuff, right? Stop off that. the cuff, in a game situation. That's hilarious. You can't get – you couldn't, you couldn't get that with this group out here, man. By the way, if they draft Jackson Powers Johnson, he's a funny guy. He's a funny guy. He's, he's got guys. 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 eyes are on him. That, that is, was the yeah. best group. Is they Jason were the Kelsey, best group. Is Jason Kelsey a funny guy? Yes. He's hilarious. Mm -hmm. See, I've just, and halfway that's off that's his what I'm guy. afraid of. I think, <laughs> I think there's my first round, late first round prediction mm -hmm. that the Eagles are going to draft this Jackson Powers Johnson to replace Could Jason you imagine Johnson. if the Cowboys were doing well, Nate Newton was in the suite somewhere, and he took his shirt off uh -huh. and was drinking beer? Could you just imagine? <laughs> that, that was Gogan. <laughs> that was Gogan. That's right. <laughs> the good one. That's a good uh, one. Go Gogan. Funny stuff. Gogan uh, fixed <laughs> Troy Aikman's finger when it, it, it dislocated. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And they get back to the huddle, and Aikman goes, here, pull it. And Gogan goes, what do you mean? He goes, pull it. And Gogan pulled it back in place in the huddle. Savannah, you missed it with yeah. the, the Cowboys yeah. in the 90s. And, and ever since Cowboys in the 80s. Yeah, yeah they were crazy, there too. There were personalities on oh those teams God. that we don't see today. And I'm right. sure there are personalities on this team. But you we said don't, Tyler Smith, Tyler Smith. We, yeah. don't, we don't get exposed to it no. because we're not in the locker room mm -hmm. like we were back then or yeah. out on the, in the field That's where we true. didn't have the same uh, – Or they're not in the locker room. The offensive right. linemen in the be. 80s were not as funny, but you had everybody else on the on the team was exactly. hilarious. Right. You had just I remember everybody. going out to training camp in Thousand Oaks. Oh, my God. And it was – it was like one guy after. They're all great interviews. Yeah, yeah. you know. Two and I don't know what happened. Two and yeah. eight. He didn't like talking to the media, but he was hilarious. Yes, he was. And he was a jokester. <laughs> he was. He's a prankster. Yeah, he was a prankster. I will. Yeah. Sam Williams. He's another one. Yeah. He oh, okay. Is. Sam Williams. Yeah. He, right. He's all got right. a great personality. Okay. All right. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Good stuff. Which is on my list of young guys that need to step up, by the way. When right. we get to there that next Is there week. another common denominator among those offensive linemen? Were they badasses, too? In the 90s, they were badasses. Mm -hmm. Those guys, they were not the nice guys that we had in the 80s. We had yeah. nice guys in the yeah. 80s. Herb Scott. Rafferty. Rafferty. Come on, man. These guys are good Kurt, guys. Kurt yeah. Peterson. Yeah, Kurt Peterson. They don't even hardly talk. You know what I mean? No, these guys in the 90s. So the profile for the offensive linemen that you want would be – what, the way that Jimmy Johnson likes his linemen, that's uh -huh. what they that's what they should have here. Yeah, they should keep that here. Mm -hmm. But it's in every other position, your whole back team. in the eighties, everybody was crazy in the eighties, except for the offensive linemen. And the only guy who wasn't uh, a brash, well, Eric Williams was, didn't say a lot. Yeah, no. he was a yeah, bad ass. The other yes, one he was, is the, he and, was crazy. And Larry Allen. No, no, no. 
But Eric you, was crazy. <laughs> you know, when people right. used to ask me, which one of those offensive linemen do you w- w- want with you in a dark alley and Eric you Williams. need help? It's Eric. Well, it would have been Eric. Before that, it was, it was Mark Tuane. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Tuane no was, he was a he was mad a scary. mother. He was a little scary. <laughs> he would <laughs> never know it because he yeah. didn't talk very much. God bless his soul. But, mm-hmm. uh, which, by the way, I, f- I finally got to watch the uh, documentary they did uh, here on Mark Tuane. Mm. And it was really, really good. I've never seen it. it. it just, it's on the website. i got to check it out. Look it up. But nice. I did the interview. It's a deep blue. Yeah, I did right. the interview with Pono, his wife, mm-hmm. and she, she was great and gracious. But Gogan talked about him. Um, I still have I, – I had his Stairmaster as of last month. But the, the, the weekend that he died, we went to see Pono. She was getting rid of stuff, you know, mm. just trying to take care of the affairs. Oh, they really? Gave, they, they gave me a Stairmaster. Oh, wow. I had that Stairmaster for It still works? Pl- uh, no, I just got oh, rid of it. It got- finally stopped. It finally stopped, <laughs> like, last month. For real, it finally stopped last yeah, month. Yeah, it wouldn't later. take. So I was on that thing, God, whenever that was, too. Like two months ago. Wow. That's crazy. It's right. really good. because and, and Michael Irvin, I thought, said one of the best things. He goes, we need to remember how he lived, mm-hmm. not how mm-hmm. he died. Oh, no doubt. It was a great quote. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that does it for uh, this edition of Big Shots. Do you want me to keep filling up my green notebook? I just yes, want you to get do. to the bottom of that kickoff in the UFS. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's hey, crazy. what happened? We'll start we, there. We, we, Chris we, went silent on it. <laughs> no, did, no, I told him. No, we went <laughs> we went on a tangent in a different oh, direction. Okay. And, uh, he's he's got the re- mm-hmm. what we needed. We'll they're doing back. a standard we'll one, Mick, but they're starting on the twenty, so there's no touchbacks. Oh. Okay. Uh, so they just push back the kickoff to yes. to the twenty yard line. I got you. So the one crazy change they did was onside kicks. You can onside kick, or do a fourth and twelve from the thirty three yard line. Yeah, I like that. And if you make it, you keep going. If the you don't, 33? the other team gets it right there. Too much of a the gimmick. Thirty three. I don't know why they picked the thirty three yard. I don't know. This just says thirty three yard line. Oh, hmm. That's just well, probably well, because they have to go twelve yards. Because you got to get to fifty, it's easy to judge. Huh? Y'all got me on that. Well, one. 40, 40, 45, oh, 45. Boy. Sorry, you know Sorry. what's the what's the yard lines for? I mean, what? The, come on. Well, I guess if you were incomplete, then the the receiving team takes over at the thirty-three. Yes, going that, the opposite and way. So that's a. 51 yard field goal. And or, what is that know, proving to me? We I'm really sorry. need to tie I'm the ball on this kickoff. At all. <laughs> Y'all are losing me. I'm going further and further right. away. We're, we're gone. <laughs> we're out. Okay. Do we'll your see. research for next week. All right. We'll see you again next Monday at 11 here on Mix Shots. Go Cowboys. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!